we've all felt extremely empowered by this experience and we took it upon ourselves to go back home and do a little more with all of the resources that Microsoft provided us and I know for me and I'm sure for you guys too we've always wanted to do something like this but it was a little difficult to be taken seriously by adults before we had all of this resources and support from Microsoft so it's been amazing we're gonna start with Jasmine here who did a ton of stuff for Safer Internet Day which was amazing talking to her local legislators then we're gonna to go to Judah, who also did Safer Internet Day, and he's gonna kind of transition us into the projects that were not related to Safer Internet Day, as he did Safer Internet Day and a couple other things. And then Mia Sotis will go, who did some amazing things with um, in Florida and Puerto Rico, which is awesome. And then I will wrap it up, and I kind of did some research. Uh, maybe some of you picked it up, but there's a paper at the front, and so that was kind of the fruits of my labor. I could start off with Jasmine, talk to us about like, what inspired your project? What I did is I presented to my class, which was over 200 people. I talked to them about how to be safer online and linked it to a history class that I did with one of my fellow teachers. Also went to meet one of our city ambassadors. We spoke about um, how to educate students and youth around our city, providing hardware uh, teaching digital skills and improving connectivity and it requires more education and awareness of the dangers that come with the internet and though the impact of these activities was felt by my school administrators my teachers my students and even my parents of the students i've only just scratched the surface of what i want to do i'm committed to leading the efforts in my school and community for Safer Internet Day every year. I am going to set up a youth task force under the mayor's office. I want to offer these the, uh, my feelings of empowerment to other people, but this comes with a lot of responsibility followed by education, and I'm an advocate for understanding the importance of one's digital footprint. I did a, a, a presentation to a class of fourth graders. I just talked to them about Safer Internet Day, you know, what we do as a council and what we believe in uh, and, and what, we're, what we're trying to fight for. So answered their questions that they had about uh, online and, and social media. Um, and then after that, I did four events um, with Parents Who Fight, which is an organization my parents run. Um, and they believe in, you know, uh, empowering parents to protect their kids. I love talking to parents uh, about how I don't have social media, I don't have a phone, I don't have any personal technology, and you know I've I've used that that influence and that and that you know perspective and help them to realize that you know they can raise a a kid who's perfectly normal um, <laughs> without without uh, social media and, and you know socially acceptable. So I did my presentation after safe. For a day, I did my first presentation in my school back in Florida. I passed out the flyers, these flyers. I talked about the console and everything we do and what we fight for. And then I went to Puerto Rico and talked about the same thing but in more details. I presented to a seventh grade class and I told them that your phone, that tu teléfono puede ser una adicción, that your phone can be an addiction. When I was talking to them at the beginning, they weren't really paying attention. But when I said that, they really, like, they really started paying attention to me because, you know, the hurricane hit, Hurricane Maria hit Puerto Rico. And at the time, there was no electricity and no internet connection. So they had actually to face-to-face -face interact and play outside and do all the stuff. They really took a lot from it. And And so I guess to talk about what I did, I just finished up my junior year of high school, and so it was a little crazy, but I was fortunate enough to have a teacher who really kind of came along this journey with me, and she was said, research literally anything, but make sure it's something that can impact your community. And I was like, well, perfect, I have this Microsoft thing. And so <laughs> I told her all about it, and so it kind of became definitely my outlet. And so with her, I was able to get some faculty support and go back to my former elementary school and I was able to talk to them about, hey, I would really like to supplement the curriculum we already have about digital civility. And so I wanted to talk to parents about it because I know not all the kids that I'm friends with, they have a super open dialogue with their parents about their online behaviors and whatnot. And so my goal was to kind of open up that discussion. And so essentially, I made a research project. I had two questions, the first being, 
Will a campaign promoting parental awareness help parents or caregivers feel prepared to teach their children about online risks and how to be safe online? And then my sub-question was, would parents actually share what they learned with other parents? I was able to talk to a group of about 30 parents and educators, and it was really cool. I gave my little like formal presentation bit, but after that, definitely all of the parents started talking to one another and building off each other's experiences. And for me, as just turning into the spectator role, it was really cool to see parents talking to each other and trying to give each other support about how they could really connect with their kids. I created the research paper, which is out for um, distribution, and it's just been a really amazing experience. And during my senior year, I'm definitely hoping that I can continue to grow with what I'm doing. <laughs> Great.